Hello, I'm calling from the trip. I'd like to confirm a call. Get to around in two hours. I'm coming up on deadline. How much money was involved? Was it over a thousand dollars? Was it over ten thousand dollars? Just a couple of more. Hey, how about a, another drink for the road? There's a law, you know. What law? I'll take a cab. Well, I think there's a law about you riding in a cab. You gotta, you gotta remember Harry Grab. I gotta remember Harry. You never heard of Harry Grab. Will you listen to this? I am so bored. I've spent the last hour watching a man MacGyver come on to Billy. Do you care to join me? Hi, Billy. Mac. What was that all about? Victory celebration. That was Red Tash. Big league pitcher. The Dodgers eat him up. And how come he's 14 and 5 lifetime against the Dodgers? Oh, uh, you didn't know that, did you, Mac? She takes his sporting news. Hey, isn't uh, Tash supposed to go against the Dodgers tomorrow? He's getting loosened up. The only way the Dodgers will beat him. Yeah, oops, uh, I just remembered. I, I gotta call my service. Good looking kid. Personable. Are you an art doing an in-depth study? Every time I look up, you're staring at us. I didn't think you'd notice. You seem so, you know, involved. Mac is giving me investment counseling. We can all use a little investment counseling. That's what they teach you in journalism school, buddy up to a high-ranking member of the financial section. I heard that folklore, too. If they're so smart, how come they're still working for a newspaper? Kingsley. Didn't wake it, did I? Who has time to sleep? Listen, uh, who's going against the Dodgers tomorrow? Uh, your paper says uh, Red Tash. Yeah, he's, he's not injured or anything, is he? There's no chance he can miss his turn. I haven't heard of it. Okay, if it's Tash, put me down for a thou, a thousand on the Dodgers. Mac, you know what you're into the book for already? Kingsley, I'm good for it. Sure. Great. Track. What track? Oh, what track's open? Ocean Park. We're just going downtown. Well, okay, that'll help some. Gee, if I wasn't going to work, I could have dropped you off at the starting gate. Well, don't worry, man. You can go now, it's green. You know, the way you drive makes it awful hard to read. A lot of people tell me that. You want me to split the cost of gas with you? You know, I'm not some bum hitching a ride. You people out here haven't got the world's greatest transit system, you heard? I heard. Why do you think I picked you up? If we don't have the world's greatest transit system, I feel guilty as hell about it. Hey, you're pretty funny. What do you do? Newspaper man, I work at the Trib. The Tribune? 
Well, you got that Ben Andrews working for you. How come you got a toad like that writing about racing? All he ever does is kiss the track's tomato. Maybe you'd be interested in doing a column for us. Riding? Uh, I move around too much. I've been going from track to track following the ponies for 30 years. I got my own thing. Handicapping. It's an art, right? It's a religion. You come, come on, here. No, come on, and climb a come tree. on, let's get this moving. Now, you all know about, hey, 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 look, you all know about the turn of land, it's the initiative. Come down. Animal. Come up. Uh, sure. Uh, Proposition 2, uh, Turner, Landis, legalized gambling statewide, lotteries, casinos, off-track betting. Go to the head of the class. Now, if I may have your complete attention. Adam, what we would like from financial is a gambling is an industry story. The stock issues, how they're doing. It's a big issue in London now. They just closed down three casinos for improprieties. Improprieties. Don't you just love the way the English phrase it? I was there during the war. They referred to it as the unpleasantness. That's great. Now, you get into it. Uh, here's a list of people we got doing pieces for us on what's happening with the lotteries in the individual states. We should get some feedback on that pretty soon. Good. Listen, Eddie, what I would like to see from sports is a complete picture of the betting, you know, on pro and college, football, basketball, point spreads, the whole bit. Billy, see if you can get a response from the governor. Try the mayor, too. Will do. I'm also trying to get an in-depth interview with Landis himself. I talked to Landis once. May not be in depth, but it'll certainly be at length. Charlie, I want Rossi out at the track. Charlie, the track is our beat. It belongs to sports. I got Ben Andrews out there every day. Well, this is investigative. I don't want your handicapper on it. The word is, he kisses the track's tomato. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put Mike Kessler on it then, hmm? Lou wants Rossi on this, and I think it's a good idea. Animal... Get out your man in the street kit. Get the pros and cons on the initiative and why. Gotcha. Okay, we've got some time on this. We have no deadline. So any one of you can be prepared that I'm going to be pulling you off for a breaking story. Meanwhile, Charlie, what's our editorial stance here? Is the Tribune for or against legalized gambling in casinos, off-track betting and all that? Well, first let me check out the false ownership of horses. All right, and see what you can come up with on holding back horses while they're getting them in shape. Yeah, schooling, that's a good angle. Well, you do know the word is that California tracks are on the up and up well supervised. And I hope that's what you find out. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and Kingsley. Hey, Charlie. Hi. Kingsley, you got a minute? Sure. Yeah. I was thinking maybe you could help us. You have been the Tribune's in-house bookie. For as long as I, I have been here. Probably 17 years. No kidding. Anyway, with this turn of Landis initiative, we're doing a roundup story on gambling. So I thought I'd go to the horse's mouth. I don't know anything about gambling. I'm just a bookie. I just want to ask something personal. How come you don't have any competition? At least I have never seen any other book on the premises. Now, why is that? I must do nice work. Have any of the employees ever gotten into the book for a sizable chunk? Oh, sure. What happens is they can't pay off. It never happens. Hypothetically, if it did, we'd work something out. I'll see you, Charlie. you got to be kidding. No, it's true. I never bet on anything. Never. Never. Uh, I bet you, Nickel, I can hold my breath longer than you. I, I bet you can't say that three times fast. I just never got into that stuff. Don't ask me why, but now that I'm doing this story, I feel like an idiot not knowing anything about gambling. Okay, wh what do you need to know? Oh, okay. Uh, what is line, uh, spread, and please? What is vigorish? Sounds like something you put on meatloaf. You never heard of vigorish? Really? Okay, it's the bookie's fee. The way Kingsley works it, you place a $100 bet with him, you lose, and you pay him $110, $115. I get it. He's a middleman. Right. Okay, that's good. Now, tell me about line and spread. Kingsley, I've got a student for you. Oh? Would you explain a few things to this young man about some of the terminology and nomenclature of wagering? I'd be glad to. Look 
look at this. Rams are nine-point favorites over the Eagles. They are. But they're only seven. It changed right before deadline. Smith's out with a knee injury. Gentlemen, you're missing my point. Seems to me our paper is little better than a tout. I don't know. I, I think of this spread as being consumer information. With tickets going for eight, ten, and twelve bucks, the sports fan doesn't want to see his good money being wasted on a bad game. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize we were consumer advocates. Miss Pinchon, there's a lot of sports loyalty in this town. The Rams, Lakers, UCLA, USC. I mean, with this kind of information, the fans can demonstrate their faith in their teams without losing their shirts. I mean, they bet their team, even knowing that the team isn't always going to win. Oh, I see. So by running the odds and the spreads, we're not only consumer advocates, but we're contributing to the esprit de corps of our local fans. That's lovely. Mr. Talbot, please take today's sports section and mark every item that might be of use to the bookies, the bettors, the touts, and the odds makers. That has to be every item here. I think there is a subtle difference between reporting the news and being a research assistant for a tout. Let's just see if you can puzzle it out. Mm. All right. Now, will somebody please tell me about this Turner Landis initiative? Now, what is it they're all saying about revenue from gambling paying up to 5% of the state's budget and that it's all going directly to the schools? My understanding is that revenues from legalized gambling are closer to 2%, not 5 They're talking about states with off-track betting and lotteries. Throw in the casinos and it all adds up. A lot of other things add up as well. What about the rise in the crime rate? When you glamorize gambling, the girls, the floor shows, the Taj Mahal atmosphere, then you are being very seductive. Question is, do we want to get into a crusade against gambling? Well, not with that kind of thing in our sports section. I don't want to be accused of being hypocritical. Take my word for it. There's a deep underlying psychological need to gamble. Not me. I don't have it. How long did Tash last after last night? He's still in. It's the bottom of the ninth. Tash has only given up three hits. Tash is working his usual magic on the Dodgers. His uniform is soaking wet. Looks like he just ran through a car wash. Okay, Tash takes off the sign. Then nods, throws. Ball strike. Slider caught the inside corner. Four count. He's picking the plate to pieces. Here it comes, a breaking ball, a swing and a miss. It's all over. Red Tash has done it again. Blanks the Dodgers six to nothing on three hits. Shows you. Watch your diet, jog, think positive, and drink plenty of liquids. Hey, listen, Kingsley, this is Mac. Can you believe that, Tash? Yeah. Dodger should have jumped on him real early when he was shaky. Walked two in the first inning. Uh, listen, I thought I'd give you a call. We save you a trip. I'm not going to be able to pay off tonight. I'm, I'm holding 600 shares of Colonial and Western, but I don't want to sell them out before Friday. That can mean the difference of uh, $5,000 to me. Hope there's no big rush. I'm not going to come down on you, Mac. Okay? I'll go for Friday. But don't you put me in a spot. I'm answerable to other people. Friday is the deadline. You're a newspaper man. You know what a deadline is. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on B and B. I have a breakfast meeting with the racing board in 15 minutes, but we can talk till then. I'll take what I can get. Why are you proposing that we establish gambling in California? Miss Newman, we've always had gambling in California. My initiative proposes that we take the gambling out of the hands of private exploiters and underworld elements and let society reap some of the benefits. It's been very successful in many places, uh, Japan, Syria, Belgium, Egypt, even New Hampshire. Yes, but in those cases, wasn't it limited to lotteries and horse racing? Your proposition includes casinos. Gambling is gambling. I don't make any hypocritical distinctions. I say let's make economic sense of it. Uh, a government study shows a sharp rise in street crime and prostitution when there's casino gambling. Prostitutes move from one location to another. That doesn't mean that there's any increase in prostitution, correct? 
I see. What about the charge that when you legalize it, more people start gambling? With Turner Landis, a man is free to gamble or not to gamble. Now, big government is not here to tell you or me what we can or can't do. I'm proposing a painless form of taxation, more money for education, mental health. I have a quote from uh, Reverend Sloan, who opposes your initiative. He says that if you put a tax on the sale of heroin, a dope dealer could make the same argument. Well, you ask your Reverend Sloan, if Turner Landis is so evil, how come we got 200,000 of our good citizens to sign our petition in less than 14 days? How are you, Mort? How's you do at the track? Even Steven. Oh, that's a pretty good day's work. Well, I got some grease, so I don't pay admission. I don't buy that $2 hot dogs, and I didn't bet on any races. I got a 50-50 chance of breaking even. Ah, good, good. Mort, the form's here. Oh. Kids, you come in there and look at that. Yeah, an old man. <laughs> Is this all? I'm sorry, I didn't need any more. Coffee? Lamb chop, salt. Five eighty one. Out of six. You got a penny? I got a penny. Thanks, Mort. Don't bother about it. Let me ask you, are you serious about not making a bet today? One day in five, one day in six, I go to the track. I don't see anything, I take a walk. So there goes your day. Oh, what do you think? I'm at the track, I gotta make a bet. What, to be polite? Not to hurt the horse's feelings? <laughs> All right, tell me. What do you do you can't do at home, watching the tube or reading the Tribune? Well, I go to the track like I always do, to study and to learn. So yesterday I had a spot in the fifth race, longest day. Mm -hmm. The price was all right. I went to look at the horse, and I don't like what I see. Something tells me. Then he ran out of the money. Longest day? Mm. Oh, no, no, he win. Huh? Hunk and a half. Oh. But these things happen. And now what do you do? The only race you wanted to bet is over. You come home and stay out there, what? What's the matter with you? Don't you listen? I just told you. Study and learn. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Teach. So, what did you learn? Well, I'm watching, learning, making mental notes. Mm -hmm. My spots up. Comes over me. I see some kind of a sting, some kind of a scam. But I think I, I think I got to figure. Scam? What kind of scam? Tell me. You want the facts? Yes. Yeah. Well, you go to the laboratory, you study and learn, put in your time. Oh. Okay, Mort. You got a point. This is where you live. Well, until the, until the 26th, then I go back east. Hey, I owe you a penny. Well, nah, don't worry about it. Easy come, easy go. Hey, I'm a little down. It's nothing. I'll get over it. You want to cancel tonight? It's okay. Nope. I think maybe you want to see my gloomy side. Listen, if there's something you don't want to talk about... It's family. Why should I bore you? Bore me? Well... My mother. She's got to have $7,500 now, right now, like yesterday. What for? Balloon payment on her house. She could refinance, but that would pop her interest rate up 2%. I just got busy. I should have checked the documents. Doesn't she have any money at all? She has some. I'm letting her have $3,500. She'll be short two grand. My old buddy Clark Bryant is into me for double that, but he's having a cash flow problem. So you need $2,000? Yeah, I just had to borrow money. And the bank checks back with the paper. And how long would you need it for? Two weeks, three. Oh, hey, come on, don't you worry. It's my problem. I could let you have it for a couple of weeks. It's my nest egg, but... Really? I so like you. Which is why I don't want you to do it. Oh, well, first, let me see what Clark can do. But, uh, hey, it's nice to know you're there. Hey, what are friends for? <laughs> you gotta be kidding. Maybe I'm dumb. Please explain it to me. But I, I got some questions on this point spread thing. Look, 
and simple. Let's say Notre Dame is playing East Idaho Teachers College. No, that's no contest. Nobody's going to bet that. But the book says spread even money. Notre Dame wins by 100 points. So I bet East Idaho they lose 96 zips, so I win. All right, I got that. But now what if they lose 107 to 7? I didn't make the spread, right? No, that's push. Push. The first race coming up? Maybe. I don't know. Vespi's coming around. And Mr. Merriam, the trainer, he's going to be schooling this filly. Doby's dream. When he does, I'll get my shot. Yeah. You mean once around the track, nice and easy, right? Yeah. Not trying to win or anything. I'll go wide. Mr. Merriam figures I can't get in any trouble. And then me and Doby's dream, we get a real race under our belt. The trainer tells you that? I mean, take it easy, don't try to win? Well, not exactly like that. He lets you know. Like he'll say, don't abuse the horse. I know what all that stuff means. And people will be betting Doby's dream. Some, I guess. If they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Have I got this schooling bit right? You're making it sound too complicated. It's just a warm-up race. The horse isn't putting out 100%, but the people who bet on him don't know it, right? Uh, something like that, yeah. Crooked is complicated. Don't say it isn't. Hey, what's the matter with you? Sorry. Come on, what's the problem? It's nothing. But I'm not crying, just a little honest concern. All right. What would you do? Tell me. I got this old friend, okay? What's your name? Mary Smith. Have I met her? I don't think so. Why not? Sounds cute. Okay, forget Mary Smith. I have this friend who shall remain nameless, who's having a cash flow problem. How much? $2,000. You mean you have $2,000 to lend this person? How can you save $2,000 on what we make? I mean, I make more than you, I think, and I can never save anything. Nevertheless, my friend wants to borrow the money. It's only for two weeks. It usually is two weeks for openers. Oh, and what are friends for? Friends? Friends are wonderful. You don't possess them, they don't possess you. So why ruin wonderful relationships with people by lending them money and finding out they're deadbeats? Rossi... Thank you. You helped me make up my mind. You're going to lend her the money, aren't you? Or him? Sure. Hey, anytime I can be of service. Listen, any piece of information we put on the sports page is an excuse for someone to make a bet. Let's say a, a hockey team is uh, due to arrive in town at 4 p.m. Well, you can bet that someone is laying odds that the plane will be late. There's no way the sports can report legitimate news without a gambler putting it to use. If a star halfback pulls a groin muscle, what are you going to do? Gentlemen, please continue to report every groin injury and late arrival without fear of my displeasure. That's great. But I am still uncomfortable with the idea that we're running a service for the odds makers and the bookies and the touts. So let's drop the spread. Oh, Mrs. Pinchon. I don't know what you're asking for. We'll be the only paper in town not running those figures. That's I mean, the only reason a lot of people buy newspapers. It's going to cost a circulation. Huh. She is just killing us. Tell you one thing. Tomorrow's home edition doesn't carry the point spread. We're going to get 500 irate phone calls. More like three. I think it'll be closer to a thousand. A buck says it's closer to three. You're on. You listening, McIver? We catch it down there one more time, you're gonna end up in one of the machines. Your next page one story's gonna be printed on your face. Lou? Hello, Cam. Ken, I'm not too fond of people trying to intimidate my staff. Yeah, well, I'm not crazy about con artists hustling my boys, Lou. What are you talking about? Some of the guys in the press room pool their money and McIver is supposedly investing it for them. Investing? No, 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 no. Our policy against that is very clear. 
Not worried about the policy, Lou. I just want to make sure my guys don't lose their shirts investing in the Save Mac McIver's neck fund. What's that supposed to mean? Lou, I happen to know he's into the book for a big chunk. In fact, I was thinking of going to Charlie. Before you do, let me check it. Fine, fine, Lou. I hate being involved, but I can see trouble coming. Now, if McIver don't clean up his act, somebody's going to get their lumps, Lou. Lou Grant. We'll continue in a moment here on A and &E. What do you do? I'm a teacher. How do you feel about the Turner Landis Initiative? Well, I teach in a classroom with 35 to 40 kids in it. Nobody can handle that. And the classes are getting bigger. You think Turner Landis will help that? Well, all I know is that people have been voting down school bond issues for the last 20 years. You know, I don't like gambling, but Turner Landis seems to be one way to get people to vote for good schools without knowing about it. Thank you. You're welcome. 319 out of 5, 181. Thank Lou, you friend with Mort, the horse genius? Mort? Sure. Take him this, will you? He's sick. You know where he lives? Yeah. Does it pay for? Don't you worry about it. And Lou, get him this. <laughs> okay, Rosa. Thanks. Doc, <coughs> how old are you? The truce. 78. I know how to take care of myself. I got a three-year-old running in the fifth race Wednesday. Heal thyself. Don't bet on it. Listen, let me give it to you straight. You ought to be in the hospital. Hospital? Are you off your rocker? What are you going to do in a hospital with me? Cut something out? Listen to the man, will you? I'm not going to go in any hospital. I can't afford it. What about insurance? Is he kidding? Well, there's Medi-Cal or Medicaid. I don't pay taxes. I haven't got any Social Security. I don't exist in anybody's books. I might be able to get you into a ward at the county as an indigent. Doc, <coughs> how bad is it? He just wants to know the odds. You're this close to pneumonia, and you're no condition to take care of yourself. All right, I'll stay in bed. If I want anything, I'll call Rosa. I'll be all right. Lou, can you feel this? Follow the instructions. Okay, Doc, okay, but don't be so positive. You're still a young man. I'll be back tomorrow night, same time. Follow my instructions. Six to one, you'll still be alive. Uh, See you, Lou. Thanks, Doc. What are you doing? Get back in bed. Come on, Mort. Come on, stop horsing around. Look. Lou, thanks. And all that. You're a good Sam. Huh? Well, just get that prescription filled and mind your own business. <coughs> lie, lie still, like the doctor told you. <sighs> sugar puffs. Huh? Get the sugar puffs in the, in the cupboard. The sugar puffs. The cereal sugar puffs. Uh, <coughs> oh. Mm. Uh, <coughs> uh, go into the closet. The brown shoes and the overcoats. Bring them to me. I'm sure you're not delirious. Do what you're told. You want your stuffed owl and your security blanket and your leather sweater from Winsaki High? The Bible. The Bible. It's over there behind the telly. Oh. Yeah. Well, I I got no choice. I got to I got to trust you. I know I'm not gonna make it. What do you mean you're not gonna make it? To the track tomorrow. What'd you think I meant? Well, tomorrow's the day. I've been clocking that scam for two weeks. Tomorrow's payday. Five hundred. Five hundred. Five hundred. And you can't afford a hospital. Well, you don't understand. That's that's betting money. You know from across the board. Win, place, and show. That's what I refer to my notes. Five hundred. Five hundred. Five hundred. 
win, place, and show on Vespi in the sevens. Fifteen hundred across the board on Vespi. That's right. The track odds. Now, can you do it? Well, you make everything so easy. I guess. Don't guess. Track odds. You hear? Get somebody to run it out. It's going to go off at forty to one. Forty to one. Moore, what's a scam? You want to tell me? Well, my conclusion is it's a setup. The fix is in, and when that happens, the fewer people that know about it, the better. Lou, you've done a lot of things for me that nobody else has ever done, oh. and I appreciate it. But you got to listen to me. You promise me something. What? You bet everything you got. Hock your house and your car and your mother, and put it all on Vespi in the seven. It's a big payday. Hi. You are held in high esteem by lots of people. The bank cashed your check like that. Just shows if you're courteous, uh, clean your fingernails, make your payments on time. I'll have it all back to you, not later than the 26th. I'll square up, really. It's okay. It's okay. I know you'll get it back. Why don't you let me finish this and we can go have a cup of coffee? Great. Uh, I'll be right back. Do one to see me. Maybe Charlie should be here for this, but I'd like to keep him out of it, seeing as how he was the one who got you this job. Well, our family sort of knew each other. Anyway, before I got him involved, I thought I'd check it with you first. What about? So the guys in the composing room have pooled their resources, like a little mutual fund. And you've been handling it. Oh, I'm doing them a favor. Oh, Lou, that's chicken feed. I'm not getting anything out of it. There are no uh, commissions or anything like that. How much is chicken feed? A little over 6,500. Do you know what the policy of the paper is? Nobody on the financial side ever uses any information to tout employees, ever. All that was spelled out to you before you took the job. Hey, Lou, maybe I made a mistake in judgment, but I didn't go to them. They came to me. Maybe I wanted to be loved, you know, one of the guys. I uh, suppose I shouldn't have done it. Mac, if you have any money, any stocks, bonds, or loose change that belongs to an employee of this paper, get it back to him. Now, understand? Well, Lou, it's as good as done. You're absolutely right. Okay? Okay. I just got through talking to the switchboard operator. They've counted 327 complaints that we're not running the football spreads anymore, plus another 200 that went directly to sports. 327 and 200. I'm going to win if there aren't any more. Whose dumb idea was it to stop running the spread? That was Mrs. Pinchon's dumb idea. In other words... It was a good, dumb idea. Kingsley, did you get it down for me? It's all taken care of. The track cards. It was better to track. I got a sandwich boy there for emergency. Thanks. That really helps me out. Oh, you can do me a favor sometime. If I can. L l listen, uh, can I get a bet down myself? On Vespi, sure. But the... Uh, Book pays 20 to 1 top odds, not like the 40 I got you at the track. You understand that? I'm not greedy. How much you want to put down? Two. 200? No. Two bucks. Oh, what the hell? Five. Bucks. Right, Lou. You know, I just passed Mac on his way out. I wonder why he was in such a hurry. There's a manufacturer's convention in Anaheim. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Sit down with me. Yeah. So, are you, uh, are you seeing much Mac? Some. He's a nice kid. Kid. He's a grown man. Just that I've known him so long. I see Marion lived next door to his mother's family. Um, iced coffee. Uh, two, please. Where was that? What? Oh, uh, it was in Southampton, Long Island. Ritzy? Yeah. <laughs> Still Ritzy for my blood. When Marion and I got married, we moved to Yonkers. Just plain folks. The McIvers, did they have money? You kidding? Loaded. Mac didn't tell you? Maybe he just wanted to see if you'll love him for himself. Maybe. Oh. I, I really didn't mean that. I mean, Mac is on his own. I think right after college, he kind of took the family fortune for granted, but then his mother, as the saying goes, turned the spigot off.
Grant. We'll continue in a moment here on a &E. And in the back stretch, it's Maury Dad by two, Panny's uncle, Silent Puss, Zipper, Barefoot Dancer, Vespi, and Bridgie's up. At the three-quarter, it's Maury Dad by two, Panny's uncle, Silent Puss, moving to the outside, Zipper, Vespi, Barefoot Dancer, and Bridgie's up. I got a lock on fourth place. Figures. Around the turn, it's Maury Dad by a length. Panny's uncle, Zipper, Vespi, Silent Puss, Barefoot Dancer, and Bridgie's up. And into the stretch, Maury Dad is fading. It's Tanny's uncle, Zipper, and Vespi, neck and neck. It's Zipper, Vespi, and Tanny's uncle. It's Zipper and Vespi, and Vespi is breaking out. Vespi by one and a half lengths. And at the finish, it's Vespi. Vespi, Zipper, Damn. and Tanny's uncle. It's official. Best be 82.40 to win, 39.20 to place, and 18.60 to show. Zip. You had the horse and you forgot to bet him. No, I win a whole hog. Five bucks to show. <laughs> oh, yes, I play the numbers. Been playing this one number now going on 12 years. 25 cents a day. And can't stop that. I start playing that number, and it's going to come out and be on the money. And you think it's all right to gamble? Are you going to vote to make it legal? Oh, no. Gambling's like spanking a child. If you're in control of it, then it's all right. But I can't commend it for everybody, because it's bound to fall into the wrong hands every time. I play my number. I can't stop it. But I vote no gambling. It comes out of the bread money. Boy, am I glad to get rid of this. Was I nervous carrying it around? 35,050 bucks. Stuff it back in your cereal box. Handle bigger chunks than this. And bigger scams? How much you get down? Okay. I made out okay. How much? Okay. Five. Five thousand? Five bucks. Five bucks? Whoa. Forty to one, that's two hundred dollars. To show. To show. Well, let me see. That's in the neighborhood of uh, twenty-three dollars and twenty-five cents. You really laid it to him. The mad plunger. I told you to huck your house, huck your car. Yeah, but why didn't you insist? Because you don't listen. How many times you think something like this happens? How many times? Not very often. Horses are honest. The owners, trainers, and jockeys, I don't trust. You knew the race was fixed. How? Well, what's this game? I want to know. If I'll tell you, you'll print it, right? Right. Well, I'm no snitch. But you knew it. Somebody must have tipped you. Lou, nobody tipped me. I figured it out myself. That, that horse wasn't Vespi. What? No. It came to me. It took me a while to figure it out. But you know, last year, huh? I saw that Vespi run once. He ran dead last at a funny sort of a gait. But the point is, the Pimlico Vespi was not the Vespi that ran today. There was a switch. Somebody made a switch. You sure of this? Am I sure of this? Lou, who do you think you're talking to? Let me use your phone. Use the phone. Somebody had the smarts. There are too many foolproof ways to ID the horses. Janice, this is Lou. Get me Rossi. Who's involved? Owner, trainer, vet? I figure all of them. But it could be just the owner. Mm -hmm. Rossi, yeah. Listen, there's a horse in the seventh race today called Vespi. But there's some question as to its identity. I don't know how they did it. That's what I want you to find out. Right. Now, before it gets cold, call the stewards at home. They'll cooperate. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Anything? No. Check with you tomorrow. Some tip. Yeah? Well, it unfolds like you can't believe. <laughs> Talk to a guy at the horse racing board. He wants to know how we knew so much. <laughs> they were just getting ready to close in. Okay. 
Vespi was brought up here from South America with another horse, a world beater named Chin Chin. According to the owner's records, Chin Chin had some kind of accident and was destroyed. Not only did the insurance company pay off a hundred grand, but Chin Chin's still alive. What it looks like is, the horse that was destroyed was the original Vespi. Mm -hmm. The horse that ran yesterday was really Chin Chin. Stay with it. What's the horse racing board's attitude? All photos and videotapes have been impounded. They've got a round-the-clock guard on the horse. They brought in two out-of-town vets who are checking on the horse this afternoon. Mm -hmm. The old MacIver runs on time. Just a little doubt you'd get it back, am I right? It's a vocational disease. That's what makes you a good reporter. Here's half of what I owe you. Thank you. What's the matter? Nothing. I know I shouldn't have borrowed it from you. Money always gets in the way. That's not what's gotten in the way. Why did you have to run that phony story past me? <laughs> what story? Oh, Mac. The uh, balloon payment story? Desperate mother, small print in the second trustee, and all that arithmetic? Why? To give it an added touch of reality? Your mother doesn't need money, and you know it. Who told you? What do you mean, who told me? What has that got to do with anything? I can explain. I bet you can. Oh, I just bet you can. You're such a wonderful explainer. You're being unfair. Why couldn't you just have told me the truth? That you needed the money to pay off your gambling debts, that you were in trouble. Would it have worked? Probably not. But at least it would have been the truth. Well, look, I was wrong. I admit it. I got myself into a real corner and I panicked. I just panicked. But now everything's going to be okay. Now that you can pay off your bookie? Yeah. I don't think so. I think you've got a much bigger problem than what you're into Kingsley for. When you can use the people that care about you or thought they cared about you. What do you mean, thought? Now, I'd like your comments on my writing before I turn it over to the editorial department. Very nice. Uh, you seem a little tepid. Don't you agree with me? Oh, I agree with you. I'm against the initiative 100%. Well, then, if you agree with me, you are tepid because you don't like my writing. Well, <clears throat> in some places it lacks a certain clarity. Here, on. Uh, this, this, this whole section. A bureaucracy to control gambling will in time certainly become part of the very gambling establishment. Now, that's a bit formal. Then, um, why don't I say that government will inevitably climb into bed with the gamblers? That's definitely less formal. I like this part, though. If the people of this state don't have the social will to invest in better schools, then we should not kid ourselves into thinking that legalized gambling is a painless form of taxation. That is damn good. Did you really write that? I'm flattered. And insulted. Billy. I know, I know. You told me so. Well, forget it, Rushing. That's not what I was going to say. I, uh, I know about Lou letting Mac go, and, uh, I'm sorry about what happened. Well, we both let Mac go. Is that your dinner? No, it's high tea. Listen, if you're down, you shouldn't be alone. You should throw that away and have dinner with someone who'll listen to you without pushing. Somebody you've worked with for years. Someone you don't have to put on a happy face for. But you lose not doing anything. Thanks, Rossi. It's okay. See you tomorrow. Ugh. Hey, Lou, you know where I can find Kingsley? I'd be a mechanic. Ah, oh, okay. I'll go down there. If you see him and I've missed him, uh, tell him I'm looking for him. Before. Well, I made a score. 
10 bucks on the Dodger game and 12 on the Angels. So I thought I'd press and get half my roll down on the Yankees and White Sox. Oh. You know, this is fun. Violating a patient doctor privilege is one thing, but when it leads to murder, it's a matter for law and order tonight. Now, arson can be a deadly business for amateurs on Police Story, next on a and &E. I'm not trying to bug you, Mr. Robinson. I just thought maybe we could talk a little. Ms. Newman, I've been a trial lawyer for 30 years. I recognize an adversary proceeding whenever I'm involved in one. I merely came in here for a drink. We just came in here for a drink, too. Didn't we? Well, I just thought in exchange for passing the peanuts, you might want to tell me if you uh, enjoy always being up to your ears in controversy. Not at this minute, no. But you do admit you enjoy having your cases end up on page one. I just do my job. You're the people who put me there. But you have to admit, you do go out of your way. Your Honor, rule Miss Newman out of order. And uh, put a drink on my tab. Court's adjourned. Was she, Dan? I just thought I'd take advantage of a chance meeting. Thought maybe he would answer a question or two. The only question a guy wants an answer to in a bar like this is your place or mine. I can't go home with you. You know I gotta work in the morning. <laughs> it's so dark in this garage. I keep complaining. They ought to put some more lights in here. It's dangerous. <laughs> lights? If they're so cheap, they'd probably just send you a book of matches. <laughs> you keys? Yeah. Oh. All right. Oh. It's coming from over there, I think. Oh, oh Art. Uh, I'll call for an ambulance. Okay. Yeah, I, I got the last of the paper signed. Uh -huh. I sent you that form, Phil. No, no, I'm not nervous. No, I've owned houses before. Sure. Homeowner's insurance. Jeez. For one thing, I forgot. I, I'll, uh, I'll take care of it, uh... Uh, tomorrow. Uh, uh, I just want to shop around a little. Uh, uh, listen, Phil, I have to go now. Just, just tell me one more time that I got a good deal. Thanks. You finally bought the house, huh? Yeah. I've been living there three years, and the house has doubled in value. The landlady decided to let me buy it before the market collapses. On the Robinson beating, it's going to be a tough time to pick one enemy from all of these. Maybe it would be quicker if we just went on the assumption that one of his friends did it. He doesn't have any friends. Oh, the Hanson divorce case, the Nazis in Chicago, the airline hijacker. He didn't pick the easy ones, did he? No, and he stepped on a lot of toes and made a lot of enemies along the way. Bob McQueen, the game show host with a big smile and the twinkly eyes? Yeah. What's his connection with Robinson? Robinson represents a consumer group suing McQueen for false advertising, fraudulent sales techniques. What kind of shape is Robinson in? Critical. He's in intensive care. It'll be a while before they know. Did he say anything? Did he give you any clue at all? No, he's still unconscious. What do we do? You take enemies A to K, and you get L to Z. Oh, good. I get Art and Queen. Why is that good? Maybe I'll get to see what's behind the secret curtain. 
So come to Balboa Federal Savings and Loan when you buy your next home. You'll be pleasantly surprised at their courteous personal service. And shocked by their interest rates. Pasadena Burbank and 13 other locations. So come on down and tell them. Art McQueen sent you. Thanks. I tried that. Their interest rate was still 12%. Hi, uh, Chet Wilkie, Archer Pools, builders of the finest pools. I don't need a pool. Well, you won't know if you need a pool until you put one in, my friend. Only then will you realize that you've always needed one. Yeah, but then if I don't really need one, it'll be too late. <laughs> Let me show you this brochure. Hey, look, Mr. Wilkie. Chet, please. Chet, please. I don't have kids. I'm hardly here. I don't even have that many towels. What am I going to do with a pool? You are going to enjoy life to the fullest, my friend. That's what you're going to do with your pool. Okay, now let me tell you what you're going to do with your pool. Okay. Forget the pool. One thing you learn in my business, can't sell somebody something they don't want to buy. Thank you. How about a hot tub? You've got to be kidding. And you come home from the factory, your dog tired, your muscles are aching, there's dirt under your nails. I don't get dirty. I work behind a desk. You're kidding. I'm a newspaper editor. What are you doing in a neighborhood like this? Closing the door on a pool salesman. <laughs> Okay? It's my ankle. I don't think I can walk. Can you stand? Ah! I don't think so. Come on. I'll take you over to the emergency room. Oh. What is it? My back. You got a bad back? I've had a bad back since the army. A hot tub can fix that. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on AMB. On America Online, I get Hampton's Encyclopedia, Barron's Book Notes, even the entire... America Online. Welcome. AMD returns to Lou Brand. AMD returns to Lou Brand. Anything new on the Robinson beating? Talk to a lot of people who wish they'd done it. But nobody wanted to stand up and take credit. Apparently, this guy was totally oblivious to the fact that he went around alienating almost everyone he met. Well, we all don't possess the uh, sensitivity to others that you have, Rossi. That's different. I'm a reporter. A lot of times I have to creatively agitate people. It's part of my job. Uh-oh. Somebody stayed too long at the disco. Oh, Thanks. You know it would be good, Adam? Go over Elliot Robinson's cases for the financial... Are you listening? I'm sorry, Lou. It's just tough to take you seriously from that position. <laughs> you look like you're at a Roman coffee break. <laughs> uh, Lou. Uh, Lou, Robinson's taken a turn for the worse. He's back on the operating table. I may join him there. I'll tell you something. If he dies, I'll have to hire the mourners. You go through to Art McQueen? He's been on vacation all week. How can he be on vacation? I see him hosting a game show every morning. They tape five at a time, Animal. They're always two or three weeks ahead. Why do you watch game shows? I love game shows. Are you kidding? Thanks to soap operas, they're my favorite. Can't he be fired for that? <laughs> Where's Lou? Down there. Oh, excuse me a second. Oh, you feeling any better? Next question. Yeah, uh, Lou, I want you to meet Detective Dan Staley. That's okay, don't get down. Dan wants to talk to Billy, says Billy Newman, and Art, it's Art Donovan, about the Robinson thing. Can you spare them for a couple minutes? Do I have a choice? Not really. Sure, I can spare them. Thank you. I'd like to start with a little lady first. Little lady? Them's fighting words. Is this a bar that you frequent, Miss Newman? 
You mean, do I troll the bar? I mean, if you go in there frequently, was there anyone there that night that didn't belong? That sort of thing. No. Did you know Mr. Robinson from before? No. But you engaged him in conversation? Yes. What went on in your mind when you spoke to him? He was a total stranger. Look, I was with another guy. I see. No, you don't see. I wanted to ask Mr. Robinson a few questions. He did not want to answer them. That is the extent of it. And then he left? Right. Okay, let's go over that one more time. I've already told you everything I know. Look, Miss Newman, you were probably the last person who saw Mr. Robinson before the beating. Now, let's go over it again. We've been over it twice. Maybe three will be a charm. I doubt it. You okay? Yeah. Maybe tomorrow we could roll in one of those little cots. Uh, no, Charlie, please. Don't roll in anything. I'm going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah, okay, just, just hold it a second. Chet Wilkie of Archer Pools? I'll take it. Put in a swimming pool, Lou? No. You know, swimming is good for the back. What about drowning? Hello, Chet, how are you? Oh, good. Hey, listen. Anybody would have been glad to help. You're welcome. What do you mean, do I have homeowner's insurance? Easy, Judge. There's no hurry. No, there's no hurry. I already made you late, Charlie. Oh, it's not important. I like to get here early. But... Yeah, but you said 7.45, and I wanted to be out in front at 7.45. Get it. It's the socks. Putting on your socks, that's the hard part. There you have to roll back on the bed and time it just right. Oh, boy, that must hurt. Oh, and I knew you were trying to drive so carefully to not hit the bumps. That's uh, such a pain. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't drive carefully enough. Oh, uh, yeah. Tomorrow, I am going to arrange to get to your place five minutes later. <laughs> You're gonna put yourself through this again tomorrow? That's great. Oh, Charlie, that's great. I'll get up five minutes earlier. You don't have to. I will. Yeah. Morning, Lou. Morning, Art. You in early, or were you unable to get up from your chair last night? I couldn't sleep. Oh, no. Will you look at this? I'm being sued for gross negligence by an alcoholic pool salesman. Mr. Wilkie? Yeah. He's selling swimming pools door to door. Door to door, huh? What does he do? Keep him in a little attache case? To make a long story short, on his way down the stairs, probably in an alcoholic haze, he trips and falls. Then he's got the nerve to sue me. 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 The guy that took him to the hospital. Well, that's what you have homeowner's insurance for, so he can't sue you for your last penny. I don't have any homeowner's insurance yet. Oh. Well, that's what it's for. Billy Newman. Yeah, are you the one who wrote the story about Elliot Robinson, about how the cops are having trouble finding out who did it? Uh, who is this, please? Never mind. Just meet me at the Blue Terrace Bar on Figueroa. I got some information for you. How will I know who you are? I'll be all alone in the booth furthest from the door. Do you want to leave me a name? Come now. I'll be waiting. Look, uh... You are interested in the guy who muscled Robinson, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I'm one of the guys who did it. <laughs> Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and Managing a family's toughest. A and E returns to Lou Grant. I wouldn't give you any clue at all, huh? Nope. Just said he was one of the guys who roughed up Robinson. Sounds risky. I don't think you should go there alone. Oh, it's Charlie. But if I take somebody with me, I'm afraid whoever this guy is will be scared off. What's the point? Your safety is more important, Billy. We don't even know how much this guy's got to tell. 
If he is, in fact, the guy who roughed up Robinson, it could be plenty. If he is indeed the guy who roughed up Robinson, he could be dangerous. Well, if I go with armed guards, we'll never know. Blue Terrace on Figueroa, huh? It's kind of a seedy neighborhood, isn't it? Yeah. Take Animal. There's no chance they'll notice him down there. Billy Newman, are you? Sit down. Here's your name. Art McQueen. What about him? He's the guy who hired me and another guy to beat up on Robinson. Art McQueen? Why? <sighs> What's the difference? Look, what I'm saying is that Art McQueen hired me to beat up Elliot Robinson. I want you to print that. Why do you want me to print that? Queen Welsh done my final payment. I can't exactly take him to small claims courts. So I want to hurt him back. You print what I told you, you hurt. You have to give us your name or we can't print anything. You can print it. Not without your name. There's no way. You'll find one. John Kennedy was not the first president to challenge his people to, quote, ask not what your country can do for you, but rather what you can do for your country. Who was the U.S. president who originally hurled this challenge? You have 20 seconds and good luck. Go. You gotta be kidding. Sounds like it could be Andrew Jackson. I think Lincoln. Come on. Warren G. Harding. <laughs> oh. All right, now look, time is up, but I'll still, still give you a shot at it. Take a guess. Woodrow Wilson? I'm terribly sorry. No, the answer is Warren G. Harding. Hey, how many of you folks out there knew that answer, huh? Well, it's too bad, Elliot. You didn't get the $10,000, but you won $350 in cash on that trip to Reno. So congratulations, then. Good luck. It's frightening how much I know. Not the image of a guy who hires hitmen, is it? Folksy TV personality, part of the community, 20 years in the same location. What kind of feeling did you get from the guy you talked to? Creepy. I was afraid of him. That could have just been the place, you know. I was afraid to swallow my beer. Well, we can't run with what he told you, Billy. Not just on his say-so. I know. I'm hoping to get something tomorrow from McQueen. Lou Grant's residence. Yeah? Yeah, just a sec. It's Mr. Wilkie from Archer Pools. Yeah? Yeah, I got your letter. Amicable settlement? No, I, I don't think so, Chad. In court? Right. I'll be the guy with your throat in my hands. I'm a public property woman. A fellow never gets used to being slandered, but you've got to kind of learn to roll with the punches, you know what I mean? <laughs> the charges Elliot Robinson raised were more than slander, though. Well, I was trying to have the trial moved up. Get it over with. Clear my name. I just hate my family having to go through this, you know? Why do you think uh, Robinson would go forward if he felt he didn't have a case against you? I don't know. You'd have to ask him. It's the nature of the man, Miss Newman. Yell, scream. Anything, as long as it's loud and it gets into the newspaper. But sooner or later, he would have had to deliver some evidence against you. Elliot Robinson is a phony, a publicity hound. In case after case, when the time came to deliver on the evidence, he'd make up some story about the FBI or the CIA trying to silence witnesses. Who knows what excuse he'll come up with in my case. Like a coma? <laughs> I would like to hold off hiring Mr. Johnson at least until the end of the month. Sounds fair. 
And I've also made a tentative decision on the Olympics. What's it going to be, the 440 or the decathlon? Uh, uh, I was a long-distance runner in my youth, you know. Lonely, huh? Oh, exhausting. <laughs> anyway, I would like to wholeheartedly support the Games. And if they could guarantee the taxpayers wouldn't be liable for the cost overruns, I'd be much more favorably disposed. Oh, and see if they can eliminate the smog as well. We'll stay on it. Fine. Well, that's all from my side, gentlemen. Do you have any questions? Lou has a question. I do. About that legal matter. Oh, Charlie, no. I don't want to bother her with that. Bother her with what, Mr. Grant? Uh, no, it's nothing. It's not nothing. Some guy tripped and fell on Lou's lawn, and now he wants to sue him. But go ahead, you tell it, Lou. You just told it. Well, these kinds of uh, nuisance lawsuits, I think it's always best to let the insurance companies settle. Don't you agree? Well, I'm... I'm buying my house, and I haven't picked up my homeowner's insurance yet, so I'm kind of liable. And Lou needs a good attorney. Jacob Bauman is good. <laughs> but doesn't he represent banks and governments? And me, Mr. Brown. If I call him, he'll find the time. There you go, Lou. Thanks. Driscoll says they found this guy in a drainage ditch out by Dodger Stadium. Wonderful. One off season, and people just go to pieces. Any theories as to who he was and why he was dumped? He said it looked like a contract job. Clean and definite. Budget meeting. What do you got there? Pictures of a corpse. Whew. Not for us. Why do they always ignore the ones with real value and print the ones with surface slickness and appeal? What are we talking about here? Women? Voters? Who? Editors. They got no imagination. Oh, that's nice, Cy. Si. Yeah, something a little different, I thought, from the annual beach crowd from a helicopter number. Forget it. I went with this. Beach crowd from helicopter. Mm. Stock shot number 641 in your program, number one in your editor's heart. I hate that shot, but I knew as soon as I shot it, it would make the paper. Hmm. Where's this from? Oh, oh, uh, cops found some guy out behind Dodger Stadium. You got one that's closer on his face? Hmm. Someone you know? Hard to tell. Mm -hmm. Anything unusual about this guy? Besides the obvious. Mm, let's see. Uh, no, nothing that really... Uh... Oh, there was one thing the cops said. Uh, he had one leg much thinner than the other. Like the guy had polio or something. It's still hard to tell. It looks like him, but it was dark in that bar. I know. But I figure with the resemblance and the limp, it's worth a shot. When he's right, he's right. Show us 453, would you, Herb? Now, are you sure you want to go through with this, Miss Newman? Well, it's not something I'd want to say for Saturday night, but I can handle it, if that's what you mean. Women don't always like the sight of their bodies. And men do? That's him. Who? The guy I thought it was. Well, wait just a second. Did he have this mole here on his right cheek? Yes. Did you look at his hand? Did you notice if he had all his fingers? This man doesn't appear to have any fingers missing. Oh, I know that. I just wanted to be sure that the man that you talked to had all of his. You're purposely doing this, aren't you? Yeah. I gotta tell you, though, you're a very gutty little lady. And you're a big creep. Miss Newman. If you know who that man is, I'd like you to tell me. I don't know who. But you said that... I just said he's who I thought he was. Then you do know who he is. Yes. But how do you know? He called me and I met him and he told me that he had been hired to beat up Elliot Robbins. But why would he tell you a thing like that? He said that the guy who was supposed to pay him well shone it and he was trying to get even. Would you like to tell me his name? Art McQueen. Not the TV guy. 
That isn't enough to time the queen into an assault charge, is it? It's murder. You mean of him? Plus Elliot Robinson. He died this afternoon. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on AMB. Returns to Lou Grant. The guy's name was Sam Cork, a small time hood, few convictions for extortion, vice, assault, very undistinguished career. Anything to tie Corcus in with McQueen? No, nothing. Corcus was the kind of guy who'd been living on borrowed time from the day he was born. So the only person connecting Corcus and McQueen is you, Billy. I guess so. Okay. Let's run with it. That's a hell of a story. All right, but before printing the accusation against McQueen, I want you to talk to him and get his reaction. It's only fair to let him respond to charges like that. We'll see him and then write it. Oh, oh, I just remembered something that Corkers told me that day. He said that there were two of them that beat up on Robinson. Wonder if the other guy got paid. I imagine so. He might even be the guy that killed Corkus. Well, I hope he likes my story. Remember, I need your car at 1 o'clock. What for? Come on, you told me I could borrow it today. Remember, I have to be in Pacoima. Mine's in the shop. Rossi, I'm on my way to a TV studio to talk to Art McQueen. Oh, well, how long is that going to take? I don't know. I should be back at 1. I'll do my best. Yeah, can you make it 12.30? I don't want to be late. Yeah. Well, that sort of wraps it up for this day, but uh, we'll see you all tomorrow now. And in the meantime, remember to love your neighbor, but not when your neighbor's spouse is around. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> They should put you through your paces out there, don't they? You really have to do this four more times today? Sure the heck beats selling vacuum cleaners, which I did at one time. Really? I was a traveling salesman in the South. Late 40s, early 50s. <laughs> you know, it may sound corny, but... Well, those were the years I developed a, a great understanding for the American people. I met some wonderful folk. Did you ever meet Sam Corcus? I don't believe so, no. A small-time hood... His body was found near Dodger Stadium yesterday. I don't go to ball games with small-time hoods. He told me that before he died, you paid him to beat up Elliot Robinson. Oh, my Lord. It's unbelievable. Me? Are you sure? That's what he told me. And you believed him? That's what he told me. Did you know Sam Corcus? No. Maybe you knew him under another name. Do you really think a person in my position would hire someone to do what that fellow did? I don't know. I don't know whether or not you're planning on printing that lie, but can you imagine what that accusation could do to my life? It takes so little for an irresponsible person to do so much harm, and I have to urge you in the strongest possible way to please, please be careful what you write. Somebody's life may depend on it. It wasn't that I didn't enjoy being a United States ambassador, because I did. It was just that I could no longer support the policies of President Eisenhower. I see. I told him directly, I said, Ike, as a matter of conscience, I have to resign. I've always felt he respected me for it, too. I don't see how he couldn't. Well, I feel a man does what a man does. Whether you're talking to the president, senator, common man off the street, treat them all the same. Of course. I had a lot more trouble with Lyndon Johnson, I can tell you that. <laughs> well, enough of me and my petty grievances. Margaret tells me you have a legal dilemma. What can I do for you, Mr. Grant? Well, this guy fell down on my steps. Where have you been? Rossi, it's 12.15. The guy in Pacoima moved my appointment up. The car's a little funny starting. You have to kind of wiggle the key in the ignition. It'll finally start. Right. You're low on gas. Oh, yeah. Hey, Rossi, you'll probably have to get some gas. Oh, terrific. Remind me never to borrow a car from you again. I will.
glass of coffee. You sit. I'll get it. No, no. It's good for me to move around. Yeah, I can tell. Does that look like my back is bothering me? More like your whole body is bothering you. Mm. Did you clear up that nuisance suit yet? I hope so. I got Mrs. Pinchon's lawyer. He's the former ambassador to Paraguay under Eisenhower. Sounds like the perfect kind of a guy for this case. He sent off a very sharp letter. We'll give you back off. Yeah. When the ex-ambassador to Paraguay speaks, people listen. Back so soon? What are you trying to do? Get me killed? What are you talking about? Your car is a death trap. The brakes went out on Hill Street. What happened? What did you do to my car? Do? I didn't do anything. I went to put my foot on the brakes and it hit the floor. Why did you tell me? Tell you what? The brakes were working perfectly fine when we drove back from the studio. What happened to my car? Your car can be fixed. I could have been killed. You're gonna be killed. What's your problem? What's your problem? Well, he wrecked my car. I did not wreck your car. I was driving your car and your car's brakes went out. Well, you must have done something. Well, I didn't do anything. Well, somebody did. What are you saying? Well, I don't know. I just think it's awfully strange that my car's brakes were working perfectly fine one moment and they they go out the next. Could anybody have tampered with them? Why? Why would somebody want to tamper with my brakes? Come on. I couldn't have left my car for more than two or three minutes. It's just my own paranoia because Art McQueen wouldn't have anyone tamper with my brakes. First of all, how could anyone do it so fast? And second, if anything happened to me, you guys would go directly to McQueen. So I don't like having my reporters in danger. That's why I called you. Mm -hmm. I'm not in any danger, am I? You could be. You know, your woman's intuition might not be too far off here. A woman's intuition? Let it pass, Brian. You said that Corcus told you there was another man involved in a Robinson beating, right? Yes. Supposing he wanted to silence you. Well, you see, that's ridiculous, because I don't know who he is. But he doesn't know that you don't know who he is. Oh, I see. And there is some possibility that she's in danger. Right. Now, I have a line on a couple of men who are known to hang out with Corkers. I just haven't been able to bring them in. Can you give her protection? I don't need protection. Yes, you do. I can't do that. I cannot guarantee protection. But in another week, a grand jury is going to convene to indict Art McQueen. Now, if you'd agree to testify, then we'd have to protect you. I'm the only connection you have between McQueen and the killing? No, but you're the best one. I'd be willing to tell a grand jury what Corcus told me. Okay, Lou? Okay. Are you sure? I mean, you're not going to change your mind a half a dozen times. I said I was going to testify, and I'm going to testify without any doubt. Most probably. You call in now. I know we're not allowed to know where you are, but you call in every day. Just think of it as a vacation with pay. <laughs> and a guy with a gun outside your door. Give you a chance to catch up on all those spy novels that you've been wanting to get to. Give you a chance to watch some game shows. I can hardly wait. Goodbye. See you guys. Take care of yourself, buddy. Remember to call. Hello, Chet. Your lawyer got the letter from mine. Good. Did he mention that he was the former ambassador to Paraguay? Settle out of court? No, I don't think so. Not a nickel, Chet. Not a penny. going to be my guard. You get me. Why you? I thought I was supposed to have a woman guard. Well, you were, but she just called in sick. It's probably one of those female things. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and I can't believe out of the whole police force, you're the only person available for this assignment. 
It's my case. And my luck. Listen, it's not my idea of heaven on earth, you know. Why don't we at least try to make the best of it, okay? I think I'd rather take my chances on the street. I don't know why I can't just stay in my apartment. Can't risk it. They know where you live. That's why we're going to a hotel. Excuse me. My boxer shorts are in the laundry. Nothing I haven't seen before. Your wife's? Never, Never been married. married. No sense buying a book if you've got a library card. Why buy a cow when you can milk one through the fence? My sentiments exactly. You forgot your mouthwash. I won't be needing it. Can I help you with that? No way. I think you have no alternative, Mr. Grant. You'll have to settle. I don't want to settle. It's not my fault. Well, it's really not a question of that right now. If it's not a question of that, what is it? How do we get you out of this in the simplest, cheapest manner? What about the principle? What principle is that, Mr. Grant? That I'm innocent. This clown came to my house uninvited, drunk, and why the hell am I responsible if he falls down the stairs? Because they're your stairs, Mr. Grant. I came to you because you have the best legal mind in the city. And we're giving you the best legal advice we can. Settle. This, this is crazy. I suffered more pain than he did. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? Huh? What if I refuse to settle? Then he will press forward with his suit, I can guarantee that. I've talked to his attorney. He's a very determined man. Countless hours can be spent by me and my staff in your defense. At hundreds of dollars an hour, your defense could very quickly add up to as much as Mr. Wilkie is suing you for. I'd rather pay you than him. There's always the chance you could pay us and him. It's not inconceivable you could lose this case. Settle, Mr. Grant. We're lucky to be getting off this lightly. How lucky are we? Five hundred dollars. There's a car right behind us. I just wanted to make sure they weren't tailing us. Got a little nervous, huh? Not until I got in the car. I see you've got those new computers in your offices. Yeah, we got them this year. Makes it a lot quieter than when I was down there last. Oh, what were you doing there? Just police work. Uh, busting into somebody's desk so you could get their files? If you reporters would cooperate with us a little bit more, we wouldn't have to do that. Have to do that. Are you aware of a document drawn up in Philadelphia in the late 1700s called the Constitution, which guarantees freedom of the press? It also guarantees us the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, Miss Newman. When law-abiding citizens are spied on and wiretapped... Police only finger dangerous criminals for surveillance. As long as you're clean, you've got nothing to be bothered about. Well, I'm clean, but I'm still bothered. How's the back, Lou? Better. It only hurts when I'm sitting, standing, or lying down. Well, I wish I could tell you that we've got an easy day, but things are really hopping out there. What have you got? Well, Altamira Police Department's under heavy fire. An internal investigation has produced evidence of fraud on almost every level. Misconduct, neglect. Uh, send Burroughs out there. Billy called in. Oh. Uh, how's she doing? Well, she says she's all right, but I'll bet she's bored out of her mind. I think she could probably use the rest. You gotta be kidding. The use of nuclear weapons is absolutely unthinkable. Even discussing it is bizarre. I can think of certain situations where the strategic use of limited nuclear weapons could be very effective. Yeah, so effective that it could kill millions of innocent people and maim God knows how many future generations. It's obviously something that nobody wants. Not even you. We're not the only ones with nuclear capabilities, Billy. But if we ignore the fact that the other countries are willing to use their weapons, we got our heads in the sand. So you could actually rationalize a preemptive strike of American nuclear weapons? To reestablish our superiority? You betcha. My God, is that scary. Oh, come on, Billy. Admit it, will you? Aren't you just a little sick and tired of seeing the United States brought to its knees by some nut in the Middle East who won't let us have our oil? Our oil? We helped them drill for it. They'd still be riding their camels over the top of it if it wasn't for us. Are you hungry? How can you talk about food when we're on the brink of World War III? I'm hungry. Did you swear off food during the Vietnam War? 
Okay, I could use a little snack. You want to call room service? You just want to go out and kill something. <laughs> From service, this is room 204. You send up two steaks, rare or medium rare. I want a vegetable plate. I should have known. Should have known what? I should have known you were one of those. What do you mean, one of those? You think you know me that well, huh? You think just because I'm a vegetarian, I'm also a bleeding heart, liberal pacifist. And you for solar energy, too, right? You bet I am. <sighs> room service, make that one rare steak and one vegetable plate. Masterpiece Theater. Pretty good, you know that? I hate the fact that you like Masterpiece Theater. Why? Because so do I. Thanks a lot. Taking quite a long time with that room service. Well, it must be my vegetable plate. <laughs> Stay back. This is Detective Staley. I've got a TA and CPI at 3200 North Ardmore. Yeah, possible injury, possible fire. Right. Looks like it's on fire. I told you to stay back, didn't I? Sure, Chief. You know, nobody got out of that car. They could be hurt. Well, I'm going to blow up any minute. Better get down there. Listen, you keep the door locked. Don't open it for anybody, you hear? It's me, Billy. I'm sorry. Did I wake you? No. I was watching Masterpiece Theater. Lou, it's over. Not here, then. Billy, where are you? Uh, I can't tell you. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm in a hotel. I can tell you that much. Mm hmm. So, what can I do for you? Well, I just kind of wanted somebody to talk to for a couple of minutes. There was an accident down in the street in that... Uh, that detective that's been guarding me, he went down to see if he could help out. He left you alone? No, oh, it's all right. I'm okay. He just went down for a few minutes. He sure was an accident. Not just an excuse to get him out of the room. Oh, Lou, come on. I called you for reassurance. I don't think you should be alone. There's nothing to worry about. Who's there? Who's there? Room service. <laughs> it's room service. We called about an hour ago for some food. Don't open the door. Lou, it's room service. We did call. I don't care. Don't let anybody in. Uh, just leave it outside the door. We'll get it later. Somebody's got a sign for it. Somebody's got a sign for it. Lou, really, it's okay. It's room service. Just a sec. Billy! Billy! I told you not to let anybody in here. Unless you want to end up dead, you better learn how to take orders. Yes, sir. Sorry, fella. It's okay. You've seen worse. Here. Billy! Uh, What's going on there, Billy? Uh, Billy! 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 Hello? Hello? I just got off the phone with Driscoll from the cop's house. They picked up the second suspect in the Robinson case. Hey. When they told him that Billy had already implicated Art McQueen, he could not wait to corroborate her testimony. That's great. That's going to take a lot of pressure off of Billy. Isn't that good news, Lou? Yeah. What's the matter with him? He just wrote a check for $500. To that guy who fell down your steps? Why did you do that, Lou? I never would have paid that guy. Yeah. You did the right thing, Lou. I wonder. I need to give that guy the satisfaction. So would I. Paying him is not an admission of your own guilt, Lou. I mean, all right, it's unjust, it's unfair, but you've got to be philosophical about it. $500 is a small price to pay to get him off your back. 
The small price is getting larger. How's that? A bill from my attorney for $700. Good legal advice doesn't come cheap. <clears throat> look, look at this. Well, how did I do? You have a tendency to ramble a little, but your answers were very clear. You handle yourself very well up there, and you look good. Not too much makeup. You were a very credible witness. Well, I'm glad I didn't embarrass you by wearing my slit skirt. <laughs> you don't even have a slit skirt. Right. We liberal vegetarians never wear them. You know, I shouldn't tell you this, but just between the two of us, after what I heard in there, I'd be very surprised if they didn't nail McQueen. Can I drop you at work? No, the paper's just a couple blocks away. I think I'll walk. Well, I guess I won't be needing your protection anymore. Billy, I've been with you for a week now. And I've learned who you are and how you think. And I've come to like you enough to want to tell you something. Yes? Buy yourself a gun. I don't believe it. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding, really. Hey, <laughs> take care of yourself, will you? You too. Bye. Bye. He's the son of a rabbi who became the great Houdini. See his magic tonight on Biography. Now, is a house haunted or just crime ridden? Cops check it out on Police Story, next on A&E. piece you filed. I was just amazed that you didn't have any first-person interviews. Oh, you're short-handed up there. Well, yeah, we are here, too. You want another reporter? I'll ask Lou uh, uh, just as soon as he gets back. So you yeah, I'll come on very strong. Right, Bert. Let me have it. When did they take off? What was the name of that airline again? Charter? Get a copy of the flight plan. It should all be on there. Yeah. Time and substance of last radio contact? Stay on it. It's the Tedesco High School basketball team. The kids have just won the state championship. Their flight back from San Diego is more than an hour overdue. No contact? Not since Stockton. Get somebody on it. Check back with sports. Get all the articles on the Tedesca team. The uh, names of the players, coaches. Yeah, they should have some art we can use, too. I wonder how big a town uh, Tedesca is. It's small, about 4,000 people. I've never heard of it. It's the most famous speed trap in Central California. You go 31 miles an hour through that town, you get hit with a $25 fine. Can we spare someone from Sacramento to go down? Have you got the stomach to call Bert back and ask him to send somebody to Tedesca? Not really. I'll let you do it. Vivian, it's Lou. Listen, can you call Danny Feldman at Van Nuys and see if he can fly someone up to Tedesca? Probably a county airport. He'll know. Yeah, right now. I'll sign it and you make out the voucher. All right. Billy? I want Animal to go, too. Call him, will you? I was just leaving. That's right. You're going to Tedesca. Tedesca? The high school basketball team just won the state championship and was headed home on a charter flight. Oh, don't tell me. Overdue. I'm trying to get you up there as fast as I can. Well, let's see. I can run home now, get some of my stuff together. City desk. Great, Vivian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Uh, hangar B. Gotcha. 
All right, they'll be there in half an hour. Right. Hangar B, Van Nuys Airport. What's up? You got us a ride? You're in luck. Somebody's ferrying an executive plane up to Portland. They'll set you down at the county airport. Great. Lou, can I go home first? You don't have time. Well, what am I going to do for clothes? If we're only going to be gone two or three days, why do you need clothes? Buy what you need up there and put it on your expense account. Terrific. I hope the feed store has a dress department. Wow! Ah! I think I better go check with the dispatcher. Yeah. Maybe I ought to get some shots. Let me talk to the dispatcher. He's going to give us the word in a few minutes. Boy, I guess I'm going to have to go talk to these people. Meet you later. but I'm from the Los Angeles Tribune. Do you have someone on the plane? Yeah, our boy. What is his name? Christopher, Christopher Dawkins. Don't you suppose if the plane had crashed, we'd have heard something by now? Well, I think so. Uh, how old is Christopher? He's just 16. Thank you. the Los Angeles Tribune. No kidding. Uh, did either of you know someone on the plane? I used to go out with Peter Schiff's dad. You did not. Well, we didn't go out at night or anything, but, you know, we used to hang out a lot together. I just can't believe this is happening. Look, Sandra, it's going to be okay. I know it. I just know it will. Was there a big crowd here to meet the plane? Really? Any members of the press, Sheriff Burkhart will meet you in the main waiting room. I got to go. I'll catch you girls later. Great. Okay, people. Uh, excuse me, Sheriff Burkhart. Does your name have a D before the T? All that's in the release we're putting out. Uh, yes. DT. Uh, all right, now let me run this down for you. Trans Sierra Charter Flight DC-3 departed San Diego at 8.12 this morning. Carrying a flight crew of three, the Tedesca basketball team, coaching staff of two, two student managers, and two alumni. The plane has been presumed missing since 2.43 p.m. Now, given the range of the aircraft and the amount of fuel on board, the plane has to be down. However, that does not preclude the possibility of a successful emergency landing. Uh, Ted, pass out those. Uh, oh, right. Here, give me one. All right, now, uh, all the names are right here on this list. Thank you, Ted. Sheriff. The plane had to be equipped with an ELT. Haven't you picked up any signals yet? ELT? Yeah, that's an emergency locator transmitter. When a plane is down, the ELT gives off a signal, if it's operating. Well, why wouldn't it be operating? Well, if the plane exploded in midair. Uh, I don't see anything about the two alumni here. Do you have any identification? Uh, we're checking that out. Now, we'll be working out of my office in downtown Tedesca. That's 23 miles from here. Is there a road from here to Tedesca? Yes, sir. We have a road, and a stoplight, and telephone lines, and several flush toilets. Now, like everybody else in Tedesca, I know these boys, their coaches. I know their families personally. If you need information, come to me. If I don't have it, I'll get it for you. But don't badger the families, please. 
That's all. Patty Hearst? No, Billy Newman. No, I mean, you covered Patty Hearst for your paper. No. Let us strike, maybe? Could have been. Matt Kessler. Oh, right, right. Are you still with the Argonian? Oh, no, I left there, let's see, almost uh, two years ago. Uh -huh. I'm up in Denver now. For the Times? Yeah. Yeah, I just came down. My ears haven't popped yet. <laughs> Wasn't your paper just bought out by the McFarland chain? Almost six months ago. All right. Yeah, operator? Collect call from Matt Kessler for Mr. Simmons. You're still with the trib, aren't you? Yeah. Word has it McFarland's buying your paper, too. Huh. We're going to be stable mates. Love the metaphor. Yeah, operator, this is Collect from Billy Newman. Get me editorial, Lou Grant. Okay, is that all they gave you? What else? Okay, fine. I'll put Milda on. You can dictate to him. Is there a number where you're going to be staying? Well, when you find a place, call in. I may be wanting to get a hold of you. Uh, just a second, Lou. Uh, I, I ran into a guy up here who told me that the Trib might be sold in the McFarland chain. The Trib? How uh, ridiculous. Uh, somebody's putting you on. Who told you that? Matt Kessler. He's up here now. He works for them. Billy. On every paper I've ever worked, there's been a rumor every two weeks that it's up for sale. There's nothing to it. I'll talk to you later. Milt, pick up 23. It's Billy and Tedesco. Charlie, have you heard anything about Mrs. Pinchon selling the paper? There's nothing to it. Lou, well, how long have you been in the newspaper business? Every two weeks, somebody says the paper you're on is for sale. But if you hear anything more, let me know. Billy, we lucked out. Every motel room in the county is booked. But, but you got us adjoining pub tents. How about a private house? One block, one, from the Tedesca Sheriff Station? All to ourselves? No, with him. About you. How nice. Lou heard a wild rule. It's not true. Dr. Kissinger and I are just good friends. Oh, it's about the paper. You'd never sell. We know that. Billy Newman heard that the McFarland chain was going to buy the trip. It's nothing to it. I've never even heard from them. Not since their initial feeler, anyway. You see? Say, could Patty get you another piece of pie or something? Uh, the coffee's fine, thanks. Oh, Operator, are, are you there? <laughs> Oh, how about some of Patty's homemade soup, Miss Newman? Oh, don't go to any trouble. Oh, it's no trouble. I'll just take it out of my freezer and pop it in my microwave here. Now, listen, I'm going to take Clay Jr. and run on over to Stevenson's. They've been taking this kind of hard. Operator, great. Yes, this is Collect, Billy Newman. Listen, I had to leave without any clothes, and I need to buy a few things. Where do you get your clothes? Fresno. Nothing closer? Well, all the really chic stores are in Fresno. <gasps> Lou! Hey, Billy, where are you calling from? Area code 311-555-6431. Animal found us this great place to stay in an old house up here. I'm calling you from the kitchen. Yeah? Big old stove, big kettle of soup simmering, gray-haired lady in apron. <laughs> hey, there's a phone ever crank on it. How did you know? Hey. Lou, I called because I wanted to bounce something off you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh... The emergency locator transmitter on the plane didn't go off. If it had crashed, chances are it would have. Right. Uh, second. I heard the, uh, sheriff talking to somebody on the phone. He called him Mr. Shane Deanst. Yeah? Isn't Bob Shane Deanst the head of the FBI for the Los Angeles division? Yeah. yeah. Why would they call the FBI in on a plane crash? Unless... The plane didn't crash. Exactly. What does that sound like to you? 
Hijack? That's what I was thinking. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and Charlie. What's the latest on Stesca? We had to do some shuffling. How's that Rossi and Castillo up there? What for? Well, Billy thinks it might not be a crash. Uh, she thinks there's a possibility of a hijacking. Possibility? You sent two guys up there? Don't you think that's overreacting? Maybe, but we underreacted to the oil spill. The Times just took that right away from us. Yeah, but two guys? Look. The way I see it, we got there first. We got a beat on the competition. We ought to go for it. If it's a hijacking, where are they? There are a half dozen abandoned World War II strips around there. You could land in one of those places and hide the plane. Who are the hijackers? The two guys who were on board who said they were alumni haven't been identified. And Billy thinks the FBI's been called in. Charlie, it's a good bet. OK, OK, I'm behind you 100%. As long as you're right. What I think you ought to do, Reuben, is cover the charter company. If the hijack angle does break, the FBI will be watching everybody who ever worked for that airline. Let's get situated first. Don't worry, will you? I'll have Billy take care of that. Talk about your urban sprawl. Maybe if we greased our bodies, we could get a few more people in here. Okay. Now, there's been a lot of wild rumors flying around here. I know I've heard a few doozies. <laughs> so here's the poop. At 625, this... At 6.25 this morning, a call came in saying the Trans Sierra DC-3 had been hijacked. The crew and members... Of, now, now, hold it. Hold it. You want to hear this or don't you? The call said all members of the team, the coaches, and the flight crew are safe. The hijackers are demanding a half million dollars. Now, the call came to Mr. Richard Schultz, who's standing right here beside me. Mr. Schultz will answer any questions. Rick? What about the FBI? Have they been called in? They're already here. Sheriff, I think that was meant for you. They're already here. Are you sure this isn't just a prank? What do you mean a prank? Was that meant for me? What do you mean a prank? Some sicko just trying to make some money off an unfortunate disaster. We don't think that is the case. Why do you think they contacted Mr. Schultz? Well, Mr. Schultz is a very active member of this community. He helped raise over half a million dollars for our new gymnasium. He's a very prominent businessman. He's the owner of the biggest new car dealership in town. He's head of the Kiwanis, head of the Rotary. Sheriff, you forgot to mention the John Birch Society and the ACLU. <laughs> uh, nothing's been said about the two men who were identified previously as alumni. Do you have their names yet? Well, when they picked up their tickets, they gave their names as William Call and Anthony Ferris. That's with an A. We checked back over the high school records for 20 years. There's no mention made of either one of them. We're assuming they are the hijackers. Do you know when you'll be contacted again? What they said is soon. I don't mind telling you that McFarland Newspapers is very impressed with the Los Angeles Tribune. It's well-staffed, well-edited, responsible but lively. It's just the kind of newspaper we'd like to go into partnership with. Those are hardly fighting words, Mr. Richardson. When you say go into partnership, isn't that just a polite way of saying you buy somebody out? No, not at all. See, to buy someone out implies a certain change of hands. Our intention, on the contrary, is not to disturb the editorial operation. You keep doing what you do so well, and we'll help you do it better. What I mean is an infusion of capital into the paper. How do you see that money being spent? You'll be able to augment your staff, 
update and complete the automation of your printing plant and reward the people who are doing a good job with the kind of compensation they deserve. Sounds very interesting. What do we have to give up to get all these nice things? What if the McFarland editorial policy doesn't agree with ours? McFarland Newspapers does not impose an editorial policy on its partners. You see, the Tribune has taken positions on occasion that have cost us thousands of lines of advertising. We're aware of that. And we've made our share of mistakes. It must have been before my time. None of these things frighten us. Well, listen, Mrs. Pinchon. I don't expect you to say yes right away. It's a big step. I'd like you to check us out as thoroughly as we investigated you. We will. I take that to mean you're interested? Let's just say our curiosity is piqued. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on A&D. Los Angeles Tribune. Yeah, how you doing, Joe? Okay, how's it coming? You happy with the numbers? Oh, that? Well, that's just the cash. My dealership put up almost half of that, you know, to kind of prime the pump. What about the rest? Well, we're waiting to hear from the bank. You know, the parents and the relatives have put up their homes, their cars, almost everything they own, and we don't have the figures on that yet. And maybe when people read your story, they'll want to contribute, too. Yeah, well, they might. Let me ask you, uh, do people know if it's tax deductible? Well, a couple have asked. What's the answer? Well, I'm saying yes, but don't quote me. Thank you. Excuse me, Joe. No, no, no. I, I told you this before. The agency can't make any firm promise. No, no, that's against policy. Yeah, well, we are investigating that area. All right. Okay, I'll check with you later. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Joe Rossi, Los Angeles Tribune. I wonder if we could talk about the case. Hey, that's what I'm here for. Marty Niles. I'm an agent. I know. I, I heard. Uh, how many guys do you have up here? Just me. Isn't that unusual for the FBI to send only one guy on a hijacking? FBI? Yeah. I'm not with the FBI. I'm a CTM. I'm a literary agent. Literary? Yeah. This could be a wonderful property here. Has all the ingredients of a terrific movie of the week. High concept, lots of jeopardy, youth. No sex in it yet, but who knows? Yeah, terrific. These phones are for the working press. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Come here, come here, come here. Come here. I think I could use you. No, I don't think so. No, no, really. I have seen your byline, Joe. I really respect your work. Now, once I make a deal with everybody here, then we can talk. Ah, you'd have to knock out a paperback in two weeks. Would that be a problem? Doesn't it make any difference to you how this all turns out? Nah, not really. We got a smash either way. Hey, here's the rest of our guys. Hey, Rossi, Ruben, you made it. Hey, Animal, hi, Billy. This is terrific. This local car dealer started this whole marathon fundraiser. We know, Rossi. We've been here for 25 hours. Has anyone thought to check out the Schultz character? Could be a cute little sidebar. Well, now that the foot soldiers have arrived, maybe we'll have somebody to do that. What's that supposed to mean, foot soldiers? It just means we need some help. Look, if this thing is going to work, everyone has to be clear on who's doing what. No duplication, okay? Absolutely. Now, we need somebody to check out the charter flight company. I'll take it. What are you going to take, Billy? I'll take the sheriff and the FBI people. Wait a second. That's the main story. That's right. I was here first. It's mine. Look, Lou didn't send me up here to interview the president of the Booster Club. I'll tell you what. You take the sheriff, I'll take the FBI. No. They're mine. Both of them. But you and Reuben can have everything else. Come on, animal. Welcome to Tedesca. Did you get through to Lou yet? No, all the lines are busy. They're going to call back. Oh, smells good? Mm. Billy, I got over to Fresno today, and, well, I thought you might be busy, so... I picked up an outfit for you. I'll go get it. Can you watch these chops? Sure. These people are so sweet, opening up their house to us like this. Yeah, Mr. Starks gave Rossi and me his other car. Nice, huh? They're really putting themselves out. You know, when this is all over, we should get them something special, something for the house. Now, don't you tell. I think they got everything. Billy, 
I hope you like this. I had to guess on the side. Are you kidding? Mm -hmm. This is just great. Oh, I, uh, I never owned a midi dress before. <laughs> well, I thought you're probably sick of pants, and this you can wear anywhere. Even on a boat. Listen, I got you some underwear. Are there little hangers on those, too? I'll be over at the sheriff's office. So. Remember, Billy, all the clothes you buy up here belong to the Tribune. You're gonna have to turn that in when you get back. Can you see Mrs. Pinchon in this? Well, yeah. <laughs> I knew we had it out in the garage somewhere. I can just roll this in the room with Buddy and Clay Jr. Well, let's see now, who's gonna be sleeping on this? Um, Rossi loves kids. Uh -huh. Everybody getting enough to eat? Now, we insist on paying you. Oh. No, 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 really. You have put yourself out so much for us. It isn't fair that we don't chip in. Besides, the paper's going to pay for all of this. Mm. Well, in, in, in that case, I guess we could just say, oh, um, to $15 uh, for each of you a day. Fair? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, sure, that's fair. And then there's the food. We could say $25 a piece a day. Is that okay? Is, is that all right? I mean, I just want to be fair. Is that fair? Uh... Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. And uh, Patty was nice enough to buy me a dress and some underwear. Right. Forty-eight ninety-three. I got that down. <laughs> Hold it, Rossi. If you're calling the trip, I've already got a call in to them. Besides, what are you doing here? We are not supposed to all be here at once. Then leave. I just got some terrific stuff from the sheriff. What? The sheriff is mine. I know, Billy, I know. I'm only supposed to be handling farm folk, car dealers, and other fascinating sidebars, but I just happened to be in the car with Burkhart, and he happened to tell me some terrific stuff. How did you just happen to be in the car with Burkhart? Hello, Lou? Oh, Billy? Yeah, yeah, I'm really glad I got you. Uh, hold on a, a second while I get my notes. Hello, Lou? Yeah, Rossi. Yeah, pretty good. Listen, I'm ready to dictate. I got some stuff about the sheriff up here. It's a great character. Former pedal of a wrist wrestling champion. Went back to college at the age of 50. Got a degree in criminology. Get her off and get off of there. Ow! Hello? Rossi, Billy, finish, okay? who am I talking to now? I can't talk to both of you. One of you is going to have to. Fred and Ginger at it again. Give me the phone, Rossi. Rossi, give her the phone. Bill, give me the phone. You don't be so Look, childish. What are you, Rossi? Move! Hey! Getting out of hand. Somebody's going to have to go up there and straighten things out. Lou, ow! Ow! ow. Rossi, Come on, Billy. Phone. I need that, okay? Hello, Lou. Is that you? The second message from the kidnappers just came in. A half million bucks by midnight tomorrow. That's the deadline. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and Isn't it great up here? Why? Oh, it's this wonderful dry heat. Heat is heat. Over 90, I don't care if it's wet or dry. It all stinks. Uh, excuse me. Have you seen Rossi? I think he's over at the sheriff's office. He's not supposed to be at the sheriff's office. I'm supposed to be at the sheriff's office. Well, then why aren't you? Because I found something really good and I can't follow up on it myself. Rossi? Rossi. What is it, Commodore? This might make kind of an interesting angle. John Fielding. Yeah, I know. He looks 47 miles out of town. You want me to have a nice little chat with him? What is he, president of the science club, the 4-H? He plays on the basketball team, and he wasn't able to make the trip. Mononucleosis. It's not for me. I can't spell it. Rossi, I'm only trying to help. Guess what? I don't need any help. I can find my own story. Yes, but they're usually with my people. How you doing? You're on my list of writers I want to talk to. Who's that? An agent. FBI? What other kind of agents are there? Rossi, then, you keep away from him. He's mine. Be my guest. So you tell me where most of this money has come from. Excuse me. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm trying to track down the plane. I've got a contact in the Air National Guard and a list of every airfield, new, old, and abandoned with a hundred-mile radius. Now, I'm thinking of renting a chopper and doing some surveillance in the air. 
And I don't know, Rossi, Charlie Hume wasn't too happy about our paying 25 bucks a day for that car. Rossi, that was really lousy. What? 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 You told me that creep was with the FBI. No, I didn't. You said FBI. I said, what other kind of agents are there? He's one of the other kind. Someday, you're going to need me, Rossi. Someday, I'm going to be standing between you and a big story. And you're going to say to me, Billy, I need some help. And I'm going to say, not a chance, Buster. Gee, Billy, you know, you've got to recognize that we work for the same newspaper. We should cooperate. I mean, we're all part of the same team. Then cooperate with me. Stay out of my way. Hello. I'm with the Los Angeles Tribune's Arbitration and Counseling Service. Hi, Arv. I didn't know you were coming. Believe me, I tried not to. But here I am. Where's Casillo? He's over here. I'll get him. I think we ought to get on him about how he looks. I mean, he represents photographers. It's a reflection on all of us. They see a guy like that coming in, and they think we're all a bunch of beatniks. Now, you see? Billy knows how to dress. Thanks, Si. Uh, listen, I'm really glad you're here. Maybe you can keep Rossi out of my hair. I will. Oh, Billy... You're covering the sheriff, right? Yes, and the FBI. Okay, I want you at the sheriff's office. Oh, Art, it's really boring down there. There's nothing happening now. Nevertheless. <sighs> Boy, is it good you're here, Donovan. She's trying to send me on some rinky-dink little interview with a member of the basketball team who didn't make the trip. You mean there's a member of the team who didn't make the trip? I like it. You want to try one, Jen? Nah, I better not. The doctor's really against me doing any physical activity at all. Mm -hmm. Look, no matter what happens, didn't you feel at the time you're getting the short end of the stick? What do you mean? Well, you must have been pretty disappointed not being able to go to San Diego for the championships. Uh, yeah, really. It's funny. I was never one of the guys, you know. I mean, I only made the team this year. Uh, my sophomore, junior years, I was kind of a klutz. And now that I'm a senior, I finally made the team. And it, it really felt kind of good. Yeah, and then you came down with mono, and the doctor wouldn't let you go, right? Yeah. I know the rest of the guys are really in danger. And who knows, maybe they won't even come back but they probably will. And they'll be closer together than ever. And this will just be another time that I was left on the outside. Does that sound terrible? Now, the kidnapper's instructions to Mr. Schultz were to keep the police out of it. So we're staying out. Okay, okay, that's the official stance. Now, what are you really doing? We're staying out. So there's no reason for you to hang around here any longer. As soon as we come up with something substantial, we'll let you in on it. Sure. Hi. Hi. Mind if I uh, park here for a while? No, we're over. That's a pretty dress. Thank you. My daughter has one like that. She's six? Eight. Oh. Well, you were right about the kidnap story, Lou. How much stroking do you want? Keep going. I'll tell you when to stop. When a county gets the travel vouchers and six expense accounts, you may not be such a hero. You didn't have to stop that soon. You know, speaking of expenses, I called Joe Morrison. You remember Joe? He worked on the news when we were on the free press. Where is he? How's he doing? Oh, he's doing great. He said to send you a friendly curse. Mm -hmm. He, uh, he's in Augusta working for McFarland. Mm. To each his own. Lou, he raves about it. Mm. Great pay and pension. They bumped the editorial budget up 20% and they've got a profit-sharing plan. And he's going to Hong Kong. Maybe they're softening him up. Lou, did you know Kelly Pierce or Marty Rasko? Kelly, I nodded to. 
Yeah, well, they're both editors on McFarland papers. Best situation he ever had, that's what they tell me. Three guys, a very small sample. So far, they've had no interference. You sound like you're sold. No, not really. It's just that I can't find anything negative about him. What am I going to tell Mrs. Pinchon? You can always lie. Jeez, it's hot. Where's Castillo? Oh, uh, phone lines were overloaded, so he went up to Sacramento to file our stories with L.A. Yeah, we know. We sent a bunch of pictures with him to put on the wire. Uh, do you know in what esteem the American people regard the press, uh, according to recent polls? We are either below lawyers and above used car salesmen, or below used car salesmen and above lawyers. And why do you think that is? It's because of the way I dress, right? Well, you could neaten up a little, Dennis. I, I, it's our image. A lot of us care about what people think of us. A lot of us are family men. Hey, I'm a family man myself. I have a mother and a father. Oh, oh Mr. Donovan, I just wanted to bring you up to date on your bills. Oh, fine. Animal, I thought you said the cars were $25 a day. Yeah, that's right. Well, I was forced to raise it to 35 Forced? Oh, well, you see, it's my neighbor, George Bundy. Now, you see, he's getting 35 for his cars from the TV people, and he said if I only charged 25 it would make it seem like he was gouging. Uh-huh. Well, you tell him that you're charging us 40 We'll back you up. Oh. Well, I couldn't lie to George. Yeah. Norma, is the sheriff there? I've got to talk to him. Uh, no. Well, let me give you this, okay? This can't go out on the radio band. We're out here where we've got the plane under surveillance. Yeah. If those guys are going to come back, we may need some extra backup. Ed is at Matthews Point waiting for him. You got that, Norma? Uh-huh. Norma? Uh... Is this Norma? Hold on. It's for you. Yeah, Rutledge here. Uh-huh. How long ago? Oh, miss! Miss! You want to hold it right there? Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and I know what you just heard on the phone. And it's more than anyone's supposed to know at this time. I know you found the plane and that it's under surveillance. And I'd appreciate it if you'd sit on it. Otherwise, I'm going to have to order you to stop. Wait a form. minute, wait a minute. You can't order me not to report that. It's funny, I thought I could. But let me put it this way. If you tell anybody what you know at this time, you could be endangering the lives of those boys. Lou? No, 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 there's nothing the matter. Yeah, I, I know. Donovan called that in. We're clearing everything through him. I figure it's better that way. Donovan says that they've raised the money and they're making the drop soon. Yeah. Uh, listen, Lou, uh, let me ask you a hypothetical question. Suppose I have some information that nobody else has except the police. And, but it's the kind of information which might, if it got out, interfere with the uh, police effort up here. I think I should sit on it. You're right. If it's that kind of thing, don't even tell me. Yeah, Lou, thanks. Uh, uh, Billy! Off the record. What do you know? Good night, Lou. Some backpackers up near Dewey Lake came upon an abandoned mine shaft. Preliminary indications are that all the boys on the basketball team, the coaches, and the flight crew were, for a time, held prisoner there. Ah, this thing gets better and better, doesn't it? Now, before you all jump in your vehicles and head up there, I might tell you that the whole mine is currently cordoned off and will be off limits until the lab technicians finish. And how long is that going to be? It'll take two hours, at least. How far is it to Dewey Lake? It'll take you about 50 minutes to get there. 50 minutes. <laughs> 
We gotta get somebody up there fast. You know, I bet that abandoned mine shaft will answer a lot of questions. Would I love to get up there and check it out? I'll take it. What are you talking about? Look. You took the FBI and the sheriffs. You said I could have everything else. Well, that mine shaft belongs to me. <sighs> okay, okay. It's yours. Okay, Donovan? Okay. Okay. See you. Come on, Sai. Why'd you give in so easily? He wanted the shaft. I gave him the shaft. I think you did. Okay, that includes the kids, the coaches, and the flight crew. Great work. Hey, is Billy there? I want to talk to her. Yeah, hang on just a second. Billy? It's Lou. Hi, Lou. Any new developments? Oh, nothing worth mentioning. Tell you what you might do. Let the sheriff know that you were holding back. Maybe he'll give you an edge when the story breaks. Knowing this sheriff, I doubt it. Then give it a try. Okay. Thanks. Bye. What was that all about? Lou trying to be intuitive. You know how he gets. Uh, Sheriff, I was wondering, could I have a moment with you? Sure, you'll have to walk along with me. I'm in a hurry. Come on. Well, you know, they'll all be rushing up to Dewey Lake now. Well, that's their choice. But I'm not going up there, and neither are you. No comment. So, uh, what do you think? Has the press acted responsibly in this case? Not too bad. A few individuals have been very responsible. They'll get the reward in heaven? I don't think I know what you're talking about. Well, for example, if somebody did act responsibly, maybe they should get a minor edge on the competition. Just a little break. That's not my department. You know where to reach me. The independent newspaper is finished. Oh, come on, Adam. What are you talking about, finished? Already over 60% of the dailies in this country are owned by chains. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're being bought up at the rate of 50 a year. Pretty soon, 20 chains are going to own them. As long as you can't beat it, the smart move is to try to get picked up by a good chain. McFarlane looks good to me. And, Luke, we know that more often than not, the chains have improved the papers that they've bought. And paid a little better, too. See, I think that we have to keep looking at it from Mrs. Pinchon's position. We keep thinking that she's worth millions, but there's very little cash. I mean, most of it is tied up in the building, the presses, the staff, and the reputation of the paper. On top of which, if something were to happen to her, I mean, the inheritance taxes would be enormous. And then her heirs would end up selling or borrowing heavily just to recoup. Yeah. It's nice that you guys are so worried about Mrs. Pinchon. What I hate is the idea of this paper selling out. At a hunch you might feel that way. Come on, Adam. You know the people who are buying up these newspapers. They're also in the oil wells, lumber mills, department stores. Don't you sense a certain conflict of interest there? Most of the fellows who run these newspaper chains today are newspaper men themselves. Richardson was an editor for 20 years. That's true today, but what about the next wave? More and more, the guys who are heading up these chains are coming out of business schools, not journalism. Sure. The bottom line, guys. Mm -hmm. Remember the Mankato Courier? One. Buddy Little Paper in Minnesota. Right. They were bought up by a chain. And for a long time, the main office left them alone. They dug up a lot of interesting stories. At uh, one time, they exposed uh, a crooked car dealership. Terrific piece, wonderful stuff. And then the auto dealers began yanking their ads. Guess what? The main office gave them a call. Told them to lay off. You got it. Yeah. I think she's around here somewhere. Hang on. Billy Newman? Phone. Billy Newman? This is the sheriff. I disguised my voice. How'd I do? Uh, pretty good, I think. Well, let me give you this. We picked up Ferris and Call. You remember them? Yes, I do. Uh, nobody's hurt. Everybody's accounted for. The boys are all okay. Now, we're going up there where they're hid right now. Then we're going to call their parents, so you better get on your horse. That's terrific. Thank you. Uh, eight graphs. Well, I'll do what I can. How's that? Uh, I'll call you later. My city editor, I pitched him this silly little sidebar, and he fell in love with it. I got to go back to the house and get my notes. Just my luck, something big will break while I'm gone. <laughs> Could you let me use the phone? 
Mom, I gotta get off. Yeah, one of the reporters needs to use the phone. I'll call you back. Yeah, Clay Jr. got over his call. But he's fine. Patty, I'm on deadline. We're on deadline, Mom. Yeah, I'll call you back. Bye. Thanks. Mom doesn't understand about these things. Huh? Get me Lou Grant. Hello, sweetheart. Get me rewrite. The best part is that Billy phoned it in just before our deadline, and we got a full edition jump on every other paper in the state. Good work, gentlemen. Congratulations. Oh, well, we got a couple of lucky bounces. We have some pretty good people up there. Our reports have shown that your city room is your strength. Even though I think you found yourself spread a little thin sometimes. Well, we manage. Uh, that sums up the Tribune, Mr. Richardson. We manage. Oh, that's no reflection on McFarland newspapers. Everything we've heard about you has been very positive. However... Uh-oh. Yes. There is one thing McFarland cannot provide. A paper that has headquarters in Kansas City cannot really care about Los Angeles as much as I do. You see, several times every day, readers call us either um, oh, delighted or they're angry. They're usually very angry, demanding to talk to the owner. I'm the owner. I take those calls. It's very important that that kind of contact be available to readers, and it wouldn't be if they had to call Kansas City to holler at the boss. And so, for now, I think we're going to have to say no. Even if it means paying the help less. Hey, Rossi, can you sort of scrunch in? That agent had a run at me to write a book about the kidnapping. That makes it complete. He asked everyone. Claimed he had exclusive rights. He signed the whole key? Nope. Niles said it was all getting too complicated. Besides, he figured the story was the kidnappers, so he signed them. Who oh. says crime doesn't pay? <laughs> Less is 10%. Hey, everybody ready? Yeah. Leave a space for me. Yeah. Set the timer. That's not funny. He was on welfare and then struck it rich with his first Hellraiser movie. Meet horror writer-director Clive Barker tonight on an all-new biography. Now, a small-town cop's resentment sets up two innocent detectives on manslaughter charges. Police Story is next on a and &E.